Hello, Andy viewers, such as you are. Um, this is a strange thing for me to be doing, but it was something that I was asked to do, and as ever, I am but your humble servant, and I'll, you know, do what I can. So, a little while uh, ago, <laughs> I, I painted the Rat Catchers box set, and popped them online in the Facebook Rat Catchers group, eloquentness, and they look like this. And I have to say, I got a very positive reaction from people. With the idea, it's not the greatest of photos, but I think you get the idea. The idea being here that I wanted to do some object source lighting uh, rat catches, making it look like they were underground and that they were being illuminated by candlelight. And a number of people asked me how this was done. And as, as I've got bone saw and vet graves yet to do, this seemed like a good opportunity to do so. So this this is my house. This is the Beard Cave, if you like. You may notice on my phone you can see also what's on screen. It's because that's how I can tell what's in shot on that. Uh, so this is my little airbrush set up at the back of the house. Funny story, when I'm finished doing this, let's pack it away. That hose that you can see out my back window? Yeah, that fell out. So I've got to go and speak to the flat downstairs <laughs> to see if I can have my equipment back. What I'm doing here is just priming in a light grey using the airbrush. Why am I using a light grey? Well... That's because the plastic is black, and I wanted to be sure that I'd done it. So whilst that camera angle is pretty good for showing me my setup, it's not it's not very good for showing you what I'm doing. So here I am uh, airbrushing in now in black. Now that everything's done in grey, so there you go vet graves, bone saw, and the goal, the thing I'm working on here. So there we are, all done in black. Very nice. Um, I then take uh, some Mournfang brown. Uh, a lot of what, well, sorry, Doom Bill Brown. What's cut out of this that you won't see is the ages it takes to clean airbrushes between things. Um, I'm just angling up from, like, if I was looking at the model straight on. Um, oh, here's a tip. If you put your, your water and your paint in and then you block the end, you see it bubbling up? There we go. Everything's nicely mixed up. Um, that's a tip that I nicked from another channel. Um, I've turned this, I've killed the sound here, but the extract here makes an awful racket. You don't really want to be hearing it. And as you can see, I've just picked an angle and I'm hitting it just from one side and with brown and I'm being very liberal um, and then running cleaner through and that's not great uh, TV. Now I'm sticking some fang in. All Games Workshop paints because that's just what I use. I'm sure P3 or whatever Vallejo do would be fine. And I'm just using the fang to hit it from the opposite angle, sort of bottom left. So I've hit it with Doom Bill Brown from the top right and fang from the bottom left. And that's what it looks from the brown side and presumably therefore the picture will change in a second i mean i know it will because it's me that edit it uh there we go the pictures changed there we're back on my desk nice and tidy as you can see um and fang on the other side now uh as you can see i've said as you can see a lot on the right hand side you can see the four paints i'm using which is mephist on red evil sun scarlet troll slayer orange and flask it's yellow and then i'm just dry brushing um with each color concurrently uh, mixing on the palette paper in front of me just picked up the palette paper that we can have so I quite like it um, and never washing my brush because I want my brush to be reasonably dry but just dry brushing in concurrent stages from that top right angle um, doing less and less each time this footage when fully stretched out is 10 minutes so these models um, the dry brushing stage is just 10 minutes or so and I'm just working my way up doing the gradients, um, mixing it on the palette paper until right towards the end I start going bare from the pot and that's that's pretty much it, all told. It's quite a simple technique. Oh, and then I did a lighter grey, I forget, a uh, rust grey I think it was, just over the fang, just to kind of give that a little bit of definition as well. So there they are. I mean, I'm not going to win Crystal Brush or Golden Demon or anything like that, but it's a idea that I wanted to do. I wanted my guild to look a little bit different. I've not seen anyone else do it, although I dare say people will. And in fact, I hope, you know, it's kind of the intention of this tutorial. If you wanted to know how to do something like this, this is how I did it. Um, I, th I think they look quite smart. Um, I think people get it. They're like, oh, right, you wanted it in candlelight. Yeah, I wanted it in candlelight. Has meant that I don't have a pelage in my morticians <laughs> paint scheme. So if anyone has a spare pelage, right, for whatever reason that they want to send me so I can paint her up, in a graveyard with all my other morts, that'd be nice, idiot beard. Uh, but there we go, that's me painting my rat catches. So on screen right now there should be a beard, should you wish to subscribe to this nonsense, please to be clicking 
and then surrounding it there will be some playlists if you want to go in and have a look at either my Don't Touch the Beard web series in which I video document and talk nonsense over the top of games of Guild Ball or the tales of the three cities in which I attempt to bring the story and uh, the background of the world of Guild Ball to life uh, and until next time handy viewers such as you are I need a better outro <laughs>